hundred miles from Melbourne is the town of Alexandra, where once old-timers fossicked feverishly for gold, and the Kelly gang of historic memory blazed secret paths to their mountain hideout. Trees are scarred still by the identification marks of the fugitive Kellys. Here lies one of the strangest diggings in Australia, a quartz crystal mine that during the war ranked high among the nation's top secrets. When America's consumption of quartz became so great that she could not meet her own requirements, Australia was thrown suddenly on her own resources. And when it is considered that a radio transmitter depends to a large extent on a quartz crystal oscillator for its transmission on a fixed wavelength, the value of the quartz can be clearly understood. In the old gold rush days, crystals such as these were thrown aside as worthless. All but half of 1% of the mine crystals are unsuitable, and of those chosen, all the angles of the naturally formed faces are identical. The mine is worked by two experts, Bob Terry and Ev Hughes, under the guidance of Mr. Jack Willey, whose quartz crystal laboratories in Melbourne helped to save the day for Australia in a period of crucial need. Here, a mild steel wheel with diamonds impregnated in its periphery is being used to cut through the quartz, which is then examined under polarized light for the detection of flaws and imperfections. These faults are marked so that they can be avoided when the small square blanks which produce the oscillations are cut. The blanks are lapped down to the required thicknesses on power-driven lapping plates. The expert finishers check the thickness and the parallel of the faces. Finally, an acid is used to etch the crystal down to the fraction of one thousandth of an inch that will cause it to oscillate at a frequency correct to within one part in ten million. Then the crystal heart is placed in its holder and adjusted and tested in a screened room to make sure that it will oscillate at the exact frequency required. And here, in his laboratory, Mr. John Willey checks the finished product. Twenty thousand pounds would be the present-day value of this gold nugget mined in 1869. The potential wealth of the quartz rejected by old-time miners is untold.